And welcome everyone to a March Madness offseason chat. I'm Andy Cass, pleased to be joined by two-time national championship head coach Dan Hurley. Uh, congratulations again, Dan. We talked uh, on the floor uh, a month ago after winning the national championship uh, in Phoenix. I know you've had a crazy schedule with all the things that come with winning a championship all around the country. You still have obviously the White House to come, Stock Exchange, you name it, and you got to build a roster. <laughs> what overall has the last 30 days been like? Yeah, you just keep, uh, I think, you just you look at each other from a staff standpoint and you say, uh, a week ago we won the national championship and now we're doing <laughs> Now we're doing this or, or, you know, wow, only two weeks ago, we were playing in Phoenix the last game of the year because the, the page turned so quickly. I, I think, you know, we, we, we put our feet in the ground here on Tuesday and then you are really by Wednesday, you're, you're dealing with all the NBA guys going out the door. Um, and now you've got your mind like totally locked in on, on who's in the portal, who fits, are there any high school players that could help? So but by the end of that week, you were just totally obsessing over what next year was going to look like. And uh, we've been working our tail off really uh, nonstop. All right. So a couple of quick topics here. First, when you look back, what was the most of many memorable moments of this championship run? I would say for me, the way that we um, see the, 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 how great we played in the tournament again, uh, I, I would just say winning everything, you know, like we, we played great in a non-conference and almost had a uh, a totally clean sheet there, except that that tight loss at Kansas. Uh, but historical regular season championship, uh, uh, just an awesome run through the Big East tournament, and then dominating the you know the NCAA tournament the way we did. But I would say the way we closed out the regular season, Andy, like um, losing that game at Creighton, uh, but then the way we responded down the stretch after having clinched the regular season and then still, you know, like, like put in like great, great performances when we already had things wrapped up. Yeah. It's really amazing. I mean, there was no shame in losing that game on the road there, but that might've been the only sort of off night you guys had in the entire season, uh, which was remarkable. All right, let's deal with the NBA draft of the Huskies who are entering uh, officially caravan can come back. What are your thoughts on the chances of the players who are not returning? Yeah, I think Donovan obviously, uh, you know, that there's a there's a chance that that he could find his way. I think to number one uh, in, in certain scenarios, uh, all of those top teams in the draft are, you know, between him and Steph Castle, they're spending a lot of time in stores. You know, teams that have top five picks, top eight picks, um, are all in on those guys, and I think that they're both going to be, you know, starting NBA players and 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 have tremendous NBA careers and. Uh, you know, Tristan Newton and 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 uh, and Cam Spencer are, are obviously, uh, you know, guys that NBA teams really like and think are going to be NBA players potentially. Um, you know, second round picks, guys that uh, eventually could play their way into being, you know, twelve year NBA players. Of the guys that we know, could or have told you, you know, will come back that core group because that's what's been great in this run the last couple of years is. You've always had at least a core. You're not building completely from scratch. Uh, what excites you the most about those group of guys that you know for sure are coming back or or even include like Caravan who could? Yeah, I mean, with Alex, I think it's a pretty, uh, uh, you know, sh straightforward situation for him. If he's if he's going to be a first round pick, you know, consensus, then, you know, he's done so much here. Uh, if you're going to be valued that way and invested in that way at the NBA, uh, you know, you, 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 you go. Uh, you know, anything short of that, I think, uh, you know, he, he should he would come back and, and be one of the stars of college basketball, uh, you know, next year here. Um, but I think, you know, between, uh, you know, Hassan Diar and Samson Johnson, two critical pieces that will return, you know, Jalen Stewart and Solo Ball, both this year, you know, helped us in some critical games and flashed their talent. Uh, so they'll make huge, huge uh, sophomore jumps as long as a uh, 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 you know, a uh, Jaden Ross. And then, um, you know, we, we have an excellent recruiting class that that's coming in that will, uh, you know, that's also part of this whole championship feel because uh, they're either great players from high school, like a McNeely or, you know, guys like Ahmad and Isaiah who, um, who know what we're all about. And they're our type of guys. 
Now, I know you do a great job of uh, entertaining us all on social media. You had that one post where you're sort of on the ground dealing with the portal, but you know, you've had great success in the portal. You've been very selective. What did you need to get out of this year in the portal? Yeah, I think you're always looking to be strategic. And I think, you know, some of those tweets, I think the, the first one really knocked me over when you started to, you know, really, it was like my first real day in there. And you start hearing about, uh, you know, what players were asking for NIL wise, some of the crazy stories going on with, with players recruitments and, and how and why they're picking schools. And, and it just, it really, it knocked me to the ground. <laughs> Um, and I just thought the fans would like it. And uh, it was just, you know, tongue in cheek. Um, but for us, it's, it's, we have very specific roles. Um, we have a very specific culture. We have a style of play that we believe in. Uh, and, and we're just, um, yeah, we, we need, I think, you know, s- some production to replace uh, some things that we've lost. But then we also, uh, we've got to have several members from one of the best recruiting classes in the country that's going to be returning so I think we solve a lot of our problems through player development um, and making our making our young talent, uh, you know, rise when it's their moment. But we're also we're strategic with when we have a role that we know needs to be filled, we'll go and get the right guy. And, and to that point, how much did you need? Because it was great with Dr. coming off the bench for Tristan. How much did you need another experienced guard and then inside, um, you know, another experienced physical four man or someone who could also play the five. Yeah. I think um, the, the, just the combination of, of Samson and, and, and Taris, I think it's uh, they're going to complement each other incredibly well. And, and, you know, a huge part of our success is, is having, you know, two great centers. Um, that is it's one of the few positions where, where you could get both guys enough opportunity, uh, you know, where, where they could both, both be super productive um, and then have different looks. I think, you know, Samson was, was awesome change of pace movement center for us this past year. He's going to be even better uh, as a senior. And then I just think Taris has got just so much, uh, so much talent, so much, uh, you know, just so much raw ability and physicality. And he's a, you know, completely different type of look. He's a huge human being, uh, but he also has, he's, he's our type of guy. You spend time with his parents, you spend time around the kid. Uh, you, you know that uh, he's going to fit right in with our like, blue collar, uh, basketball junkie mentality. Well, to that point, I, I love when your podcast with JJ Redick, uh, when you talk about Turkish basketball and you and Luke Murray were thinking, okay, how are we going to make this team look a little different? What kind of sets are we going to run? How can we get different players free? Um, how much are you looking forward to that aspect? You got your staff back, you got your guys back that once you get this full roster, you can sit down and say, okay, how can we use these players effectively to maximize their production? How much are you looking forward to those sort of think tank sessions in the off season? Yeah, that's, um, I always say the best part of the day or the least complicated part of the day is like, you know, the basketball piece, right? The time on the court with the boys, um, you know, the the preparation, the film study, uh, you know, the, the constant chase of mastery as a coach. I think, um, you know, a lot of people or a lot of, uh, you know, so much is said about player development, but there's always, you know, this coaching development each summer too. Like we expect as a staff that we're going to be a lot better, um, that we're going to improve, that we're going to keep studying, uh, looking for newer, better ideas uh, that we can experiment with the, the entire summer. But um, whether it's an NAIA game, division three women's game uh, or, or third division uh, game in, in Spain, you know, we're, we're always like, we're always on the lookout for some so just creative basketball ideas because we're all just, you know, myself, Kamani, Luke, you know, Tom Moore. We just, uh, you know, we love being coaches. Hey, last two things, the schedule. Um, you know, some games were scheduled for you. Uh, you've got in the Big 12, Big East, you got Baylor coming in. You got Maui, and I'll be there with you there. You got a great field in Maui. So that's uh, four right there. And then Gonzaga returns to the Garden. Um, that's quite a lot right there. That's, you know, five games, high level. Uh, are you done? What what else do you think you could add? And what do you think of what you've already done here? Yeah. So, you know, we've got the Baylor at home, which would be nice for our fans because, 
you know, last year there were too many neutrals and, and, um, you know, the, the fans were upset with me, uh, the season ticket holders were, but we did get them uh, back to back. So I, th I think they're off my back on that now, but, um, you know, the Baylor game is nice for them. Obviously we, we, we were seven and all at MSG last year. So that was, uh, we had to get a non-con game there uh, in Gonzaga. It's just awesome to play those guys, get so much respect from Mark and, and Gonzaga's brand. And, and, and then, uh, you know, we've got the, the Texas series where we're going to start, you know, on the road there, uh, you know, where uh, we'll, we'll get Liam McNeely uh, uh, a trip home back to Texas there. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he has a good shooting night because I know the crowd's going to be on him. All right. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Of this. So that that's that's quite a lot. That's plenty for a team that's trying to three peat. And that's my last thing here, Dan. Um, we've seen two in a row, Duke in the early 90s, Florida in the 2000s there. Now you guys, you got to go all the way back uh to to wooden i mean if, if i'm not mistaken um for three how much is that driving you it, it drives you a lot um to say that to, to say that that's a non-factor and that you know and that we're not defending anything and and you get so much of that advice uh you know from from different coaches that you know at, you know you've got to kind of act like you haven't won anything um, we already carry ourselves like we've never won anything. The way we practice uh, our shoot arounds, our film sessions, what we're doing in June, July, while, while most people aren't even on campus, uh, what we're doing in the weight room, our mentality all times of year, we, 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 we work and prepare like we've never won anything. Um, but we were, you know, sometimes like when you are defending something you, 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 uh, that's important to you and means everything to you, you defend it with your life. Um, and our expectation is that we're, we're going to defend these these championships that we have now, uh, we'll literally defend it with our lives. And, um, you know, the, the chance to to make history like that, um, you're talking about, you know, John Wooden and, and those players, the Bill Waltons, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You're talking about the biggest legends in the history of college basketball that you have a chance uh, to try to join an even more exclusive club. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is absolutely, uh, you know, somewhere towards front of mind <laughs> right now. Well, congratulations again, Dan, on an unbelievable run. Uh, look forward to seeing you here at some point in the offseason. Uh, and obviously, we're going to be tracking this team as potentially the number one or two in the preseason yet again. Yes, let's go. Cannot wait, man. And uh, we get to do some cool stuff. But the, but the best part is uh, best parts, the journey, the best parts, the work.